Today we're checking out AMD's flagship mobile processor, the Ryzen 7 940HS, built into this tiny box. How exciting, because this baby has an 8-core CPU with AMD's latest Radeon 780M RDNA 3 integrated graphics. And if that doesn't get your blood pumping, it's time to get your pulse checked. So, how does the Simply NUC Moonstone R9 Mini PC perform? And is it the most powerful 4x4 Mini on the planet? But before that, the Ezos Rec Experts screen recorder is an all-in-one solution for recording everything on your screen, whether it's online meetings, gameplay, tutorials, and more. Rec Experts supports 4K and 60fps in various video formats, and there are plenty of additional features, including a simple video editor to clean up your recording. Give it a test run with the link in the video description. Simply NUX Moonstone R9 looks very similar to an Intel NUX 13 Pro, and material-wise, same deal really. Premium hard plastic shell and metal plate underneath. A metal chassis like the older NUX would have been nice, but at least it matches the current Intel offering. In the box you definitely won't receive a cup with blue and white popcorn, a laptop shaped vanity mirror, socks, mints and sunscreen, USB drive and blue candy. No sorry Bob, but you will get a smaller retail box with a manual, the mini PC, power supply, power cord, screws, and monitor mount, and even a smile. But not from me. I don't smile. And when I do, I don't. Over many reviews, I've heard some of you tell me you won't buy a Chinese mini PC, stating reasons such as lack of BIOS and driver support, after sale service, phone support line, security, and so on. As I constantly get reminded, you're all looking for something different. So here is my first review of a US company's mini PC engineering effort on the AMD side, which as far as I've researched, provides all those things. Additionally, Moonstone comes with an industry-leading 3-year warranty, something you'd only find with Intel NUC Mini PCs. ASUS, 1 year? Seriously? What a joke. You can customize the Moonstone R9 on the Simply NUC website as you like, with plenty of options, including lids with additional port expansion. The price for this Mini starts at $939 US dollars with 8GB of DDR5, and a 256 gigabyte storage drive. Taking a look at the ports, the front has a microphone array and drive activity light, USB 2 and 10 gigabit USB 3 port, as well as an audio jack and power button. On the back it's dual USB 4, but these are 20 gigabit, not 40 gigabit per second ports. So this is not functionally the same as a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port. There's dual USB 3 10 gigabit, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and dual HDMI 2.1 TMDS. With the USB 4 port supporting Alt-DP, you can easily run 4 monitors off this mini. Oh, and wouldn't it be nice if everyone labelled their ports with the numbers like this? It would make life so much easier. There's also a micro SD card reader on the side, which sadly isn't very common anymore, and a nice addition. Opening the Moonstone R9 is just like a NUC. 4 exposed screws, lift the bottom plate, and here we are. The space for a 2.5 inch SATA drive, but only the R5 and R7 model support it. The R9 doesn't have the pins for additional expansion. The NVMe drive is cooled by a thermal pad which transfers heat to the metal plate. The included NVMe SSD here is a Kingston and the RAM is Team Group 4800 DDR5. However, the Mini supports up to 5600 natively, so I'm going to show you the difference it makes in the benchmarks. I'm good like that. Linux runs on Moonstone without any problem. I did a quick test with Ubuntu off a USB drive, and everything was working just fine. Alright, benchmark time. In single core, Moonstone's AMD chip finally gets a large bump in performance and gets closer to Intel's best. Almost 6% behind the latest i7 NUC, and a 16% increase over the Ryzen 7735HS. In multicore, Moonstone takes first place by a large margin. Almost 27% over the i7 NUC, and 12% over the 7735HS. Memory speed affects video encoding benchmark results. With included 4800 memory, Moonstone beat the 7735HS by almost 5% and the i7 NUC by 11%. Putting in a 5600 memory kit and the improvement was 8%. Almost 13% against the 7735HS and 18% over the NUC. Nice. Checking out graphics, in 3D Mark DX11, Moonstone wasn't impressive with the default configuration and fell behind the 7735HS units, a total of 7% behind the top performer. 
RDNA 3 prefers more memory bandwidth, as once I switched to 5600 memory, Moonstone came out on top. That's a jump of 17% over the 4800 memory, and just over 10% against the 7735HS. In DX12 with the default configuration, Moonstone is just over 1% behind the 7735HS. With the 5600 memory, it's 18% ahead, which is 17% better than the 7735HS. RDNA 3 looks to have low double digit gains over the RDNA 2 graphics found in the 7735HS when it has faster memory speeds. But let's see how it compares with actual games. Ratchet and Clank at 4800 memory speed performs close to the 7735HS. With more memory bandwidth, it stays above 30fps, no problem. There's around a 15% performance gain over RDNA 2. In Valorant, the Moonstone 7940HS had a significant boost with the faster memory. It now reaches over 200 FPS. The other two performed pretty similarly. In Forza Horizon 5, the 7940HS performed a bit worse at default memory speed. At 5600, there's around an 8% improvement. In Elden Ring, memory bandwidth wasn't as much of an issue and Moonstone was ahead in both tests, but 5600 was faster. A similar result for Cyberpunk. In God of War, Moonstone was slightly behind at 4800 and just over 10% against the 7735HS with a faster memory. Moonstone is getting close to 60fps in Breath of the Wild at 5600. Another generation or so and this final holdout on the Wii U will be a solid 60fps. PS3 emulation results are varied. Disengaging. Race complete. While Moonstone 5600 leads in Wipeout HD Fury and Skate 3, it fell behind in Motorstorm in this section. CPU temperature held up pretty well. 80HC was the highest I recorded, which is on the lower end of the stack. Noise levels were decent, and under load, Moonstone sounds very similar to an Intel NUC. I wouldn't be surprised if it's using the same or similar fan for its cooling. The included Kingston Gen 4 drive had decent sequential read speeds, but the right didn't hit Gen 3 speeds. Maybe the higher capacity one does better as this was just 256 gigabytes. The included NVMe cooling did its job and kept the drive temperature cool. There's no controller temp, but worst case scenario, add 20 degrees, which is still under hitting any thermal throttling issues. Idle power draw was about average, and max power draw was as expected for a Ryzen Mini at a 45 watt power limit. I tried setting it to 54 watts in the BIOS, but there wasn't any improvement in benchmark scores. Alright then, let's summarize. Simply Nux Moonstone is basically a Ryzen NUC with nice build quality that's designed in the US and has a 3 year warranty. It features AMD's flagship CPU in a 4x4 inch box and is a good performer. It also has expansion capabilities. With Simply NUC, you'll have tech support for up to 3 years if you need it. However, the default configuration of the Moonstone R9 comes with DDR5 4800 memory. Since faster memory makes a double digit difference to graphics, I would recommend including 5600 as an option or preferably as the default config. 
There's no additional storage expansion on top of the single drive. While it has dual USB 4, they aren't full 40 gigabit USB 4 ports for something like an eGPU. Finally, it's a premium US design product with a price to match, so it's not for everyone. And that's it. A nice performer with AMD's flagship and has some cool features like expansion capability and the three year warranty. Oh, and if you're wondering what happened to the Intel NUC, you can check out my video on the untimely death right here. Cheers.